Good morning, good morning. What we are doing today is a tour of the bass boat. Uh, been trying to get it cleaned up, been fishing so much, I wanted to do a tour of it pretty clean, but we're gonna go over the boat we got. We're going to go over what we like, what we don't like, and pretty much all about the new 2018 Bass Tracker 190. Stay tuned. All right, we're gonna start off right here with the front of the boat. Uh, well, first off, we have a 2018 Bass Tracker 190. 20 foot boat. All right, we'll start from the front. Uh, we have the folding in hitch, which everybody wants to be putting them in your garage. Uh, Tracker gives you the powder coated, really, really good, like it's like a Dora coat, almost like a Rhino liner coat on your trailer. Okay. Also, since we're at the trailer, they give you nice steps with diamond plate on them. All right go back up to the front all right right here on my boat uh, we have the trolling motor that came on it it is a 40 pound thrust Minn Kota edge which well, I'll talk about things I don't like but it's a Minn Kota edge uh, has the troll perfect on it right here uh, the troll perfect basically is a piece that goes on your shaft and you tighten up this bolt right here and it controls how easy your foot pedal shifts and it also stops the wobble in the shaft. Um, speed nut on the front, they say it's supposed to be quieter. I've watched stuff on YouTube, it's not, it just looks pretty cool. Uh, the good thing about it is to take off your prop, you could use your hand because you could unscrew it by hand just by turning here instead of having to have a whole tool set. So that's good. I think that was like 45 bucks and that was like 45 bucks. Uh, but that's the trolling motor. All right, and it goes foot control, which we are going to upgrade this whole trolling motor system to a 24 volt, 80 pound thrust Minn Kota Ultrex. We just have, I haven't had time to go get it, but that's what we're gonna do, okay? All right, let's see. Uh, the inside of the boat, we're gonna get inside the boat to show you, but I'll just kind of give you a glance of what it looks like inside. Okay, um, well, since we're out here, we have the motor, we have a 115 horse mercury uh this thing hauls ass the boat packed and loaded with a bunch of stuff water and a full tank get up to 45 miles an hour if you don't have like a half a tank and you have one person you'll get up to 50 55 uh we have the power pole a single power pole for now we plan on changing it to a dual power pole and we have the bracket which is in a different video that um mercury requires you to have okay and there goes the power pole set up on there. Take a step back, you can see how the power pole sits. All right, I'm gonna get another one soon, just kind of waiting. And that's the back of the boat. Um, for when we do look at um, our electronics, we do have the total scan from Lawrence Elite, which does side scan, down scan, and structure. And then we have our front unit, which I just use for regular sonar. And we'll get to that front unit now. Uh, when the boat was bought, the main unit it had was this Lorentz right here. This was the main unit it had. Oh, it's pretty dirty. The regular hook four was the main unit. And what we did was we took the this unit, which was supposed to be the main unit, because it's pretty crappy. It's pretty much just used for, you know, fish finding, water temperature. There's no charge on it. We just put it in the front for now. Just so when I'm in the front, I could see the depth and all that kind of stuff and the water temperature and I don't have to keep going to the back of the boat. And then what we have here is we swapped that out with the Lawrence Elite <coughs> TI-5. Um, that's what we have in the front that has charts, the whole nine on it, man. Total scan, down scan, 3D, everything you want. Uh, we also put it on a ram mount so I could face that mount up, 
down or I could even turn the whole unit around to face me while I am trolling. So that's the unit we have there. And for the outside of the boat, that's pretty much it. Now we're gonna go into the inside of the boat. All right, we are in the boat. Take a step up here from the bow. You guys can see how it looks from up here. Okay, now we'll start from the bow. Uh, we have our up-down control for our tilt, trolling motor plug, a little bit of storage. We have a rod strap there. And I actually put the back rod strap on because Tracker don't give you two rod straps. They give you one for each side. I'll put a second one there. And that's the stock one. Now let me take a step down. All right. We'll start with the rod locker. Here's a rod locker. All right. All the rods are in the rod locker. Okay. It is cramped, it is tight, it's hard to get out rods, but I guess it's pretty good for what it is. That's the size of rods you could fit. And that's the rod locker. Now, one thing, which is going to lead me to the baths of this boat. When it rains, water gets in through any holes in the front. Water comes down there and it kind of sits in there and your rods will get moldy if you don't keep this thing open to air out. As you can see, just condensation in there already. That's one of the things I'll get to. Okay, that's that. All right, now here, I yeah, rod locker. And I keep all my soft plastics and terminal tackle. I pretty much keep everything I use to fish in this locker. Everything. Um, from jigs to weights, everything's in that locker. Uh, you got some space on the side. And this right here is the crappy drainage system that that they put on as you can see there's a hose it does not work and what happens is you get water back in there sitting and it really does suck so you have to leave these open or or you could lose all your terminal tackle or everything will be rusted it, it sucks but whatever i like the boat but also the vinyls you can see the vinyls starting to peel up that's another problem we got to deal with these things pop right off like they're garbage pretty much uh, I got to deal with that with Bass Tracker. This side, what I do is, this is my wife's side. My wife doesn't like her stuff getting wet. So she takes all her tackle out. And I just put like a crate in there to keep stuff from moving around. Because this stuff fits in there pretty well. I keep uh, life jackets in there and tow ropes and stuff. That's that one. All right. Now, what we have here is we have our, our typical cockpit. You know, we have our bilge, nav lights, typical. All our live well stuff. It has recirculate from the outside, recirculate from the inside, aerate, and a horn that is the biggest joke in the world. I wouldn't beep it because it'd be comedy hour if I tried to beep that thing. But it's a horn, I guess. Um, now what we have here are seats. Under this seat right here, we have storage. And we have this bank charger. And the thing I don't like about it is they gave me the cheapest bank charger a amp bank charger you can get now if i'm all day on the water running live wells in a tournament and come home it will take me about 30 hours to recharge my trolling motor battery 30 hours and i think it's because they gave me that cheap 8 amp uh charger so when we get the new trolling motor obviously we're going to have to go to a three bank and we go to a three bank we're going to get a better charger and that's also a seat center seat um don't it's supposed to be a step. I wouldn't step on it too much because these bolts start to come loose. If you step on them and you'll notice it like they'll be almost falling out one day. And we have this seat here. Storage under here. Those are the seat posts that go for the seats. Okay. And water builds up right in here a lot. So you have to be really careful. Like that thing will stay soaked with water. Um, it just it just does. It stays soaked with water. Um, these right here, I'll talk to you about these in a minute. Keep that on your mind. All right, we have our one thing that is kind of stupid about this is when this seat is on here, you can't really open your live well all the way. But that's the live well. Uh, I've had no problems with live well. 
Live well works fine. Pumps work fine. It drains fine. No, no problems with it. Live well is good in my in my book. Live well is perfect. Okay. Two coolers. You have a cooler here, and you can use it for either tackle because the tackle box is in there perfect, or ice. And one thing about the coolers, I'll tell you, I love the coolers. I love the coolers because they keep ice for like two days, man. Like I'll fish and come back on a second day and there's still ice in the cooler. And I keep my bilge, not my bilge, my own thing, my plug in there. Because I have a system when I put the waters in the boat, which I do every time, I put the bilge plug in. Now we will go to the motor compartment. All right, decided to stay on the boat for that. We'll open up motor compartment. And you see there's no room for nothing in there. Because number one, they put the gas tank all the way on the right, so all your weight is on the right. So when that's full, and I'm sitting there, it's kind of hard to keep the boat straight because all the weight's on the right-hand side. But they give you room for three batteries. Okay, you have one there. I have my power pump pole, pole pump in the middle. I have a battery in the back. I had to custom make that power pole bracket to fit there. But when I get my third battery, the third battery is going to go there. And that power pole bracket is going to go in there somewhere. Um, that's the engine compartment pretty much if you want to call it a compartment. But uh, you cannot put more than three batteries in your compartment. There is no room. There actually is no room for a power pole pump, honestly, unless you make room way in the back. And once you put your power pole back in there, you can't reach the pump if you had to service it without taking out the batteries. So that's kind of jacked up but that's that all right let's talk about the boat uh things i like about the boat uh like i said it's a 2018 bass tracker 190 pro team as they call it um, when you do buy one of these boats you have to realize one thing they're going to give you the cheapest electronics the cheapest electronics to get by is what they're going to give you so don't expect to get fancy electronics trolling motor they're going to give you the cheapest slowest trolling motor you can buy 45 pounds rust 12 volt what you're gonna get okay they're gonna pretty much go the cheapest on everything the bank charger they're gonna give you the cheapest slowest bank charger just so they could tell you you have a bow you got electronics you got a bank charger but as you know the bank charger like if I was fishing a two-day classic with this bank charger I wouldn't be able to fish the second day because I wouldn't have a charged battery and remember it's 8 amp they could have given me the 20 amp they didn't, they gave me the 8 amp. Uh, the good thing about the charger, the NOCO, is that when you plug it in, it'll charge the batteries. And once the batteries are charged, it'll go into trickle mode. And you want to do this especially with a power pole because the power pole pump um, keeps blinking a light looking for the remote. And over 30 days, that will kill your battery. And what happened to me is it killed my battery so bad that I could not recharge it. I got a new battery under warranty from Mercury Marine, uh, the Bass Tracker place I bought it from. I actually bought this boat from Bass Pro Shops, and I got a new battery. But well, just remember that. Uh, keep it plugged in all the time. At least the NOCO chargers, the, the geniuses, plug in 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Because that will just condition your battery, okay? Also, when I bought this boat, we got it for a certain price, and they gave me a $500 gift certificate. And with that $500 gift certificate, I bought the upgraded electronics. So I put it right back into the boat. Um, got the special power pole bracket that Mercury wanted, which is in another video. Scroll through my videos and you'll see there's a bracket that Mercury wants you to have to keep the warranty on your motor. If you were to put a jack plate on or you were to put a side mount, uh, one of those power pole brackets that squish in between the motor, you have to take it off. You void your warranty with um, Mercury. You have a five year warranty on your motor and you don't want to lose it. So that's why I got that. I wasn't too happy about drilling the four holes in the transom, but I just did it because I don't want to keep the warranty on the boat. And I guess when you get to it, it looked pretty cool, but drilling holes in your boat is something like it's an oxymoron, hole in a boat. It's like, why would you want to do that? All right, another thing. This boat in general, I was drawn between the Nitro and I was the Bass Tracker, okay? In a nutshell, the nitro can cost anywhere from 10,000 more to 50,000 more. Okay, I wanted an aluminum boat because I've been a John boat guy, so you know, this boat's aluminum 
and that's why it only has a 115 on the back because it can it pushes it really easy that's why the nitros have like a 150 200 because they have to push a heavy um fiberglass boat but i went and got the bass tracker i like the boat i wish i would have gotten a nitro honestly because this, it's just the water problems like in the hatches when it rains i mean pours down rain down rain pouring you will get about that much water sitting in your you know in your storage hatches and you'll have moisture in your in your rod locker and the biggest biggest places under the passenger seat there's just no seal it's pretty much a, a square box and your seat just sits on it so i mean when i wash the boat i watch the water go down there and go in there i mean that's where it goes and that side right there gets the most water now the problem is that when in florida it gets you know it'll rain it'll get really hot so all that water will sit in in the banks in all these storage compartments then it'll want to evaporate and what does water do when it evaporates? It rises back into the atmosphere. And what happens is it, it'll start to evaporate and it'll sit on the top of your um, hatch doors and then it'll just sit in there and ferment and create mold. And I've had times when all our rods, all of them had mold on them. And it's just the water problems in the tracker, they really have to fix the water problems. They just, they don't have any hatches that have any kind of seal. If you look at a nitro, for instance, when you open it, um, the actual flange is raised up and there's a rubber grommet around it and when you shut your door it pushes down on the grommet to keep water out i was told from some nitro guys they do get some water in there too but not to the extent of this boat but let's get back to a positive note okay this is the boat we use you fish tournaments in it we love it uh it was priced good i guess when you want to compare the price of this boat to another kind of boat you get what you paid for um do love the boat I do keep a Yeti cooler in here, just so this is like ultra dry storage. Uh, as you probably seen, I have it sitting right down here, the Yeti cooler. And that's like ultra dry storage, but like if I'm bringing camera equipment or something, I don't want to get what I put in here. Um, otherwise, I don't think there's no other things I want to talk about with the boat. Uh, if you do get a bass tracker, I would recommend putting it in a garage. That'll make it look brand new all the time. Cause I watch some guys with their bass tracker videos, their boats are shining dry they keep them in a garage where i live at, i have a steel building that i built but it's a building for working and welding and stuff so i can't put it in so for now you know my boat sits outside uh we're gonna build a pole barn to cover it but i would do something about all that water stuff but otherwise uh it's a good boat 2018 bass tracker uh has the 115 mercury on it and a couple things I would do right off the bat when you get the boat, if you can, upgrade the trolling motor because you're going to upgrade it anyway. Because the 45 pound thrust, I fish some lakes and if you, anything over eight mile per hour wind, you're not going nowhere. At 10 miles per hour, it's like you're anchored because I was fishing a tournament and I had 10 mile per hour winds and I literally wasn't going nowhere in the wind. So just keep that in mind. You know, when you get the boat, you're going to want to change right off the bat that trolling motor. And also keep in mind, changing a trolling motor puts a third battery in the back third battery takes out your power pole pump space so then you have to put your power pole pump in an area tucked in the back of the bilge where you're going to have to take out your batteries to even adjust the power pole pump now some people say put your power pole pumps um, in the storage places and up in the front but the problem is you don't have enough space as it is and you get water in there so, I mean, you could put the power pole pumps, you really could, really could fit them, I guess, back in that compartment, back in towards you. Because I don't really have nothing sitting there. It's kind of empty, so that's where the water sits. You probably could put them there. I would do that. And uh, you're going to want to get an upgraded electronics because, see, I used to just use electronics for just fish finding. Now I use the charts. I use the I use the structure scan. Me and my wife were using the side scan and canals. And when you're in canals, man, the side scan is so good because, you know, you're in a canal that's like maybe, I'd say, 30 feet wide. And the side scan scans under all the lily pads you're going. And you literally see all the bass sitting there. Now, if they want to bite, it depends what you throw. But otherwise, everything else seems fine. Oh, one more thing. I showed you the poles for the seats. Right here. This is the biggest pain in my butt. As you know, the pole goes into the deck and your seat goes on there. Two things. The seat does not want to come out of here sometimes. There's been times when I was trying to pull the seat up and I almost lifted it out and fell out the boat. Number one. 
There's been times when I've driven home with this still in the deck. You wanna know why? It goes in there so tight sometimes that you need a monkey wrench. You could see I have wrench marks on it, okay? I need a monkey wrench to turn it out. I don't think that that's right. I don't think that you should have to use a monkey wrench to take this thing out of your deck, okay? And if you notice the later 2018s from Bass Tracker, I'll try to float a picture up above of it. They put a new system where basically this thing goes in, there's a clip and you clip and pull it out. You wanna know why they did that? Because this system sucks. I seen some guys who ream it out and put them so you can slide them in and out. But I worry about that, man. You know, if you're take, if you're, you're riding fast on a lake, you don't want this thing flying over your head with your seat on it. And it, I don't even want to think about that. But that that is what pisses me off. I mean, these are beefy, beefier than the real skinny ones, especially for a guy like me of my size. But these things do get stuck. I've been putting WD-40 on them, but it's 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 kind of hit or miss. And if you notice, every single thing that's storage in our boat is in waterproof containers everything because if you have something without a waterproof container in your boat it's garbage wet mold so the waterproof containers do help you'll probably when you buy this boat i'd say get eight of the big waterproof containers and you'll be able to put everything under your seats keep everything dry you won't have to worry about nothing getting messed up uh, you know if you store a reel or something in there waterproof container man all day long anything expensive uh, like we have a 50 dollars scale waterproof container i had a scale get destroyed sitting in here the moisture destroyed it and it was it was like a i had the scale since i was i was real young i bought the scale but i paid like almost a hundred dollars for it and garbage so uh that's pretty much that if you have any other questions about the boat about the bass tracker about anything that you've seen in the video feel free to comment i'll be glad to answer you back i'm always improving the boat uh like i said you're going to see a video on the new trolling motor we're upgrading the trolling motor to the minkota ultrex uh, which has the iPilot, which I'm stoked about because you could actually just, you know, they have a spot lock uh, where you hit the button and you're locked on and you're not moving nowhere and it's just too technical for me. But, and we're doing that and we're going to put a second power pole bracket, but that's going to be probably next year sometime, the second power pole because those things all cost a lot of money. I mean, just to, we priced out the trolling motor and just the trolling motor with the battery and the other bank charger is $3,000. I mean, if you look real hard on Craigslist, you could find a whole bass fishing boat with a trolling motor for $3,000, if that's what you want to fish out of. Uh, but that's pretty much it. Oh, one more thing. I keep forgetting more stuff. My boat has vinyl, okay? As you can see, it has a vinyl on it, all right? It's not carpeted, okay? Here's the thing about the vinyl. It looks cool as hell. It does mess around and take your shoes off and fish barefoot in Florida. You will burn the skin off the bottom of your foot. Is the equivalent to walking on a grill after you've got done barbecuing and you shut the top? The grill, it, the deck gets so hot that my wife has to stick her feet in the water to be able to fish through her flip flops. That's how hot it gets. It looks cool. Another thing is it peels. You know, I got it peeling. I have a tear up front. I wouldn't recommend getting the, there goes my air conditioner. I wouldn't recommend at all getting the vinyl. Go to the carpet. The carpet stays cooler. It doesn't peel. It seals your hatches better because the carpet slams tight and seals around it. Get the carpet. Do not get the vinyl. It is so damn hot. It peels. I got pieces ripping up. Looks awesome. Like you look badass pulling up with the vinyl on your floor. It kind of looks like a seed deck kind of. Well, I'll give you an example. I want to cut this video a little short. I'm taking a long time. When I kneel down to tie on a bait, I burned the skin off my knee. And I was like, holy crap, this damn thing is hot. So just, if you're gonna get this boat, remember a couple things. Trolling motor, upgrade it. Electronics, upgrade it. You wanna make sure that you do not get the vinyl. You want to get the rug. The vinyl gets too, too hot. If you wanna look cool and you fish somewhere where it doesn't get hot, like I'm in Florida, this thing is like an oven. Okay, if you're fishing somewhere where it stays cool, go with the vinyl. But if you're somewhere where it gets hot, especially in Florida, do not get the vinyl. Trust me on that. <laughs> Trust me. And that's pretty much it for the boat. Like I said, any questions, feel free. Please, if the video helped you, like, subscribe, comments. I'll have a links of some things that are on the boat so you can go and get links to buy certain things. But, um, you know, 
keep this channel going. We really appreciate it. We're at 99 subscribers. We're trying to get to 100. So if I could, I, we're looking to get that 100 subscriber. So if you can give me that click and you could be that 100, that'd be great because we're working our way up and uh, we're going to do more things. Look forward for more videos. Any questions, email on the bottom. Send me a message. Put it in the comments. Beagle Bats Christian. Out. Let's go.